everyone. Good evening. I'm happy to be here. I, uh, I have to tell you, I recently bumped into a kid I went to kindergarten with. And uh, it was awkward. It was awkward. I mean, what do you say to someone you haven't seen in 50 years? Hey, you still like purple? <laughs> How's that drinking milk for a straw jammed up your nose working out? Did you ever a job? And he looked at me and said, did you ever learn how to play nicely with kids? I was, uh... He knows me. I was, uh... I was a little antisocial, but uh, I did two tours in kindergarten. And, uh, and I grew up poor, which, uh, which really sucks, because you have to wear hand-me-downs. And for me, it was increasingly embarrassing because my older sister was not that much of a fashion player. <laughs> I had an uh, interesting set of parents. My father was the biggest, hairiest, half Polak, half Russian you ever saw. And uh, he always hung around with his six brothers who were equally as hairy. I was 13 before I realized three of them were sisters. <laughs> He was not a successful man. He, uh, he had menial jobs. He did his best to support us. And uh, I offered to help. I tried to get a paper route. And then uh, the bastard wouldn't give it up. <laughs> My mother, on the other hand, was a hoarder before it was fashionable. She had three bags, three garbage bags of twisty ties. And uh, I said to her, Ma, what the hell are you doing? What are these for? She said, you never know. <laughs> I said, you never know what, when the Tappan Zee Bridge needs to be very strong. <laughs> she had an uh, intense fascination with the obituary column of the newspaper, and I uh, read it every morning and tiptoed upstairs to my bedroom and put her little lips near my ears and went, Guess who died? <laughs> and who died, Ma? She'd say, you know that? I'd say, the paper boy? <laughs> He'd say, no, his brother's uncle's next door neighbor's boss's son. Oh, Jesus Christ, you think we're going to have school? <laughs> but uh, they were very supportive of me, very supportive. They said to me, don't go out for any sports. You're too fat and short, you won't make any teams. <laughs> And then they worried why dead animals started showing up in the neighborhood. <laughs> and my mother said to me, don't, don't fret, you're built like your Uncle Meyer. Does anybody want to be built like a guy named Meyer? I mean, how crummy does your own name have to be where you give your kid the name Meyer and think it's an uptick? <laughs> my mother said to me, though, the man could knit. <laughs> I said, so at 10 years old, you want me to know? Why don't I just go up to the high school and blow the whole football team? <laughs> Can you imagine show and tell? Billy brought his eight foot bow that ate the neighbor's dog. Tony brought his sister's busted pendants in the main nation. Michael, what a beautiful sweater set. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm a survivor of scouts. Anybody else here survivor of scouts? Yeah. yeah, I grew up in Anderson City, but uh, for some reason my parents thought it was absolutely necessary that I learn to survive in the wilderness. <laughs> Should I ever walk the 37 blocks to the nearest fucking tree in my neighborhood? I would know how the will lead to out of wine bottles. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm pretty big here. Just coming off a pretty big year, 30 years of marriage. Thank you. I should tell you, not consecutively, it's more uh, cumulatively. Uh, if you add them all up, it comes to about 6.4 years a woman. And uh, my mother always says to me, God, I wish you could be a nice woman. I said, do it, every 6.4 years. But I've uh, been trying to get in shape, going to the gym recently, and, uh, but the thoughts of, uh, of having abs have long since taken a back seat to my quest to find jeans with an elastic waistband. <laughs> and I uh, finally got frustrated. I finally said, you know, there's got to be a machine in this place that'll make me more attractive to young chicks. The guy looked me up and down. He said, try the ATM machine in the lobby. 